Hey, Dave Bot here outside our bubble. Today, we're going to get inside the black and gray tanks and talk about drainage tubes. Let's get to it, shall we? This is our wet bay area. Now, for those of you who have been RVing for a while and what have you, you know what this all is. But for those of you who are just getting started or kind of wondering about things, um, we're just going to briefly talk about the, the use of the tanks, and then we're going to get into... Um, talking about drainage tubes and the different qualities in drainage tubes. And then we're going to get all the way into putting in a new drainage tube system. So got a lot to cover. Hopefully I'm going to make this as short as possible, but let's get right to it. First and foremost, this is our wet bay. And one of the first things you'll notice is I have a knee pad grabber. Put one of these in your wet bay. They fit real nice on your stuff like this or somewhere in your wet bay. And because you never know when you're going to, where you're going to park and you're going to want something to put on your knees if you're working in the wet bay. So you'll have stones and rocks and everything. And these are great. In any case, I also carry a pair of um, rubber gloves because you always know that you're going to need to do more than likely something with the black and the gray tanks. And, you know, if, if you, you more than likely might need gloves on it. But anyways... There's a lot of different things that people talk about when it comes to black tanks and gray tanks. And I'm going to talk about a little bit of the, um, the logic behind what you do with these things and how you do them. Starting with the black tank. The black tank is where, well, shitter's full. <laughs> You've heard that line in, in uh, European, or excuse me, Christmas vacation. Shitter was full! Ah, yeah. You checked our shitters, honey? Well... This would be what becomes full. And the reason it becomes full is because you leave your black tank shut. And why do you leave your black tank shut even though you're hooked up to a sewer line? Well, that's because all your solids and everything go plunk and they go to the bottom and they sit there. And if you don't have any liquid in there, they're just gonna accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and be very hard to flush out. So what you do is you leave your black tank closed all the time until it gets to about 60%, 70%. Then you open it, and with all the fluids and everything you've put in there over time, including the solids, that will be a big flush coming out then. It'll, it'll create a, a suction effect, which will come out of this three-inch tube and pull everything with it as best as it can. So, what you want to do then is, is leave it shut until it gets to about 65-70%. And then, the gray tank you notice right now is shut on ours also. Now... People talk about the gray tank and they do one of two things. They leave them open all the time or they um, shut them and open them just like they need to with the black tank. So they'll shut them until they get to about 75% or so and then open it up and let it run out and shut it again. A lot of people think that there's no reason to do that. If you're hooked up to a sewer line, open up the gray tank, let it go. And then if this starts to get high, say 50%, shut your gray tank, let the, let, let the water build up so you'll have something to flush the black tank tube out with. So when this gets to about 50, make sure you shut this if it's open. Let things build up um, from showers or whatever. And then when you empty your black tank, then you'll shut it and you'll open your gray tank and use the gray water to flush the tube out. It's very important because you don't want crap left in your tube. Uh -uh, that's not a good thing. So, um, for those of you wondering why you don't just leave the gray tank open all the time, well, that depends on what you might be doing. Solids can build up, and not only solids, but cooking things like grease. That can leave a film on the side of the tank that clings and sticks there. And to prove this, I've done something. I've left our gray tank open for the last month um, to show you what I mean by buildup. And it's as simple as this. Just plug your nose if you need to. I didn't put my gloves on. I apologize. You can see here, you'll see that that is all sludge that is built up on the side of this clear cylinder. This is oils and, and fat and everything that is basically, look away if you need to, it's gross. But this is also, if it clings to this, which is an outgoing port, think about how it's cleaning on the inside of your tank. This is why it's very important also to clean your gray tanks. So if you're one to leave your gray tank open, um, and this is our gray tank on this side, so what happens is it comes down and the buildup has happened on that side because the runoff is on that side. You notice there's nothing over here on the black side because the black is not open. But anyways, 
if you're gonna if you're one to leave the gray tank open, then you're also gonna want to remember to put chemicals or, or, or bio material in there to clean those tanks out. And so what we do when we get ready to travel, we, we let the gray tank get to about 50% full, and then we'll put in uh, some Hampy Camper, that's a chemical that we, that we like, put that in, let it sit, slush around as we're driving and everything, and that breaks down all the greases and everything. And then as soon as we get somewhere, we open it up and flush it all out. So there's your pros and cons of opening or shutting the gray tank. And, but the black tank is very important. Leave it shut until you want to flush it. And that's about that. So we're going to move on to tubes now. And there's different types of tubes that are out there. You've seen the brown tubes and you see I'm using a gray tube here. Um, now the brown tubes, I stopped using those because after I went through two of them in, in, in less than three months, because they cracked at the seams, at the, at the, at the, at the spines, um, they just have not been the quality that I have come to expect. So I found this new, this gray tube, which I very much liked and, and still do, except it does have a few issues that, that I was hoping to get away from. One of which is, as you can see, things break down over time. This tube, I've, I've had this tube in use for about um, uh, two months now, and it's been sitting out like this, and it comes in the sun and the shade. This happens to be the same tube, but the extension tube. And what do you notice? You notice there's a huge discolorization between the two. This one hasn't been pulled out at all. This one has. And that is just because of the sun glaring on it and hitting it, which is very important because over time that will break down this rubber and sooner or later you may, re you may, you may have a leak. Oh, I got to go. Oh, dude, that is nasty. Don't worry, I'll get another hose. I have already patched this tube one time. But the other big thing I don't like about this particular tube is when you close it up like this, like this is how you're supposed to store it, of course. Since the material and the, and, the, and everything is so so lightweight, it, as you can see, it kind of just falls, falls open. So even though I could do it like this, as soon as I go to move something, it falls away. It doesn't stay connected and closed, which means I can never, if I'm close to my drain, I can never just put out a nice little, um, a, ni a nice little looking thing. This always is going to be splayed out like a snake. To give you an example, if I take this and I put it together like this, it doesn't stay like that. And to make it worse, if I open up my gray tank, see this? If I open up my gray tank, watch what happens. This takes off. It spreads out because of the pressure of the tank. Notice what happened when I when I shut it. It's a suction brought it back because I didn't let the I didn't let all the suction out. So uh, you can clearly see that it doesn't hold its form when you're trying to use it. So if you're close to something, you're going to have this whole snaking tube out just to reach that when it could be nicely compacted like they like you normally would see that. So what have I done? I've discovered a new system called the Drain Master. I think that's what it's called. In any case, it is. It's over there. I don't, I'm not looking at the box, but um, it's called the Waste Master. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Waste Master. Okay, that is a green and white hose. And the Waste Master hose is a product that's been around a little bit. It's been highly developed. And the biggest thing about the Waste Master is it does not use these bayonet locks. Now, just so you know, this bayonet lock here that you see in all RVs, this is the only place you see these. The RV industry is the only industry that uses bayonet locks. What does everybody else use for, for drainage and what have you from tankers that you see on the road and everything? They use a cam lock. A cam lock is a very tight system that's very easy to operate and, well, it's a lot safer. I shouldn't say safer. Safe's not a word. Uh, in regards to this, it's, um, it's, you have less, you're less prone to leaks and stuff with a cam lock than a bayonet lock, because this is just, you know, a, a fitting that just kind of goes in a, a cam sitting fitting, as I'll show you, goes right up in there. And then you lock it in place, which brings it in and really keeps it going. On top of that, they developed a tube that stays together when it's shut and expands out to where you need it. 
and the inside of the tube, the way that this, they constructed it, it's it's got a nice smooth interior because they put the ribbing on the outside and it's very pliable. So hey, why am I talking about it when I can show it to you? Let's do that. Okay, so like I said, Waste Master, not Drain Master, Waste Master. Yeah, I screwed up before, but hey, I tried to do things, things in one take and that's what happens. Any case, the Waste Master, this is a different system. It looks the same, doesn't it? except for this big green thing and a hose. But the big difference is what they call the cam. It's a cam lock system. And as I said, every other industry that does waste product or, or transport of liquids uses a cam lock. And the reason they use that is because it's a positive seal. It, it, it is a, it's a seal that is just positive. It won't leak. So let's do this thing. We're gonna install this and I will warn you ahead of time that the installation of this does require you to modify your coach. And what I mean by that is the little tabs that are on here for the bayonet, you need to remove those and cut those off. And then you're actually going to glue in the, um, the, the, the fitting, the cam fitting. But that's what you're going to use from that point on. And it's going to be a much cleaner install for you going forward. So what do we have here? Okay, so first and foremost, this is the end. Now the end, you'll notice, is attached. This does not come off. This is the way it is, and it is attached. It comes with the donut pre-installed. The good news about the donut being pre-installed is more and more towns or campgrounds or, or whatever are requiring the use of a donut for a positive seal on, on the drainage. And let's make let, let's face it, you've come to a lot of those places where you can't screw down anymore because the threads are just stripped up and it doesn't hold, you gotta put a rock on it or something. So, or you grab your donut, put it in there and shove it in. This comes already pre-ready to go, nice handle to grab onto, and down it goes. Also comes with a shutoff valve, and you're saying, Dave, why would the heck would you need a shutoff valve? Well, I can tell you that I've been to a park where I've plugged in, went to drain my gray tank, because as we travel, we clean it out, and when that water came out and started going down that tube, it backed up, and because there was a plug in that drain, if I, would, if I had this system at the time, I would just be able to turn it off, boom, and seal this and not have to deal with what am I going to do with all the liquid in the tube because I just sealed the tube. So then I can take this back off. They can clean out the drain. I can put this back on, open it up, and let it flow. So that's a, that's a positive thing. The, the, the downside is, like I said, it's big. It does not get removed, so storage might be a particular of, of an issue. However, with that said, you got these tubes. Now, this is the new tube. As you can see, it's solid. However, and it stays in place when I'm moving it around. Does not does not open up. Does not what it, does not come apart with like this tube does. You know, very flexible, very very loose. It's an industrial grade tube that, when you open it, stays exactly where you left it, which is great. And it's also crush proof. So you can step on it, crush it, do whatever you want. You won't hurt it, which is positive and a good thing, obviously, in this RV world. So you can close it. It stays closed. You can open it. It stays open. But the magic is this. This is the cam. You notice the end. There's no bayonet fitting on the end. This is, this is a, a cam fitting, which is the male end. And this is the female end, which we're going to install right here. Okay? And how a cam fitting works is two connectors. Pull down on the connectors. There's the plug. And you notice it looks just like the fitting. And you take this and it goes in. And when you go in, it's positive. So now when you grab this and you pull, it locks it in place. So that is not going anywhere and it's leak proof. So. That's a cam fitting, and this is why everybody in the world uses cam fittings and not bayonet fittings, but for some reason, the US RV industry. Okay, but you're saying, but Dave, they make, what if I need a tube from somewhere? I don't have a cam tube available. Yeah, that's true. You can't just get these from anywhere. You can't go to the store and just buy a tube uh, with a cam fitting. So they do make this nice little adapter, this cam fitting to your bayonet fitting as an adapter. So you can still take this when, when we got it all in place, put that in there and it goes right back to a bayonet fitting. If for some reason you need to use a different tube or something, don't know why you would. Well, Brenda reminded me of the reason we wanted one of these and it's a good reason. 
Say we're at a rally or something, or you're parked at a campground that doesn't have full sewer hookups. Well, they do offer sometimes a honey wagon to come around and pump you out at a certain times. That happens in courts at Arizona even. But what do they bring to hook up? A bayonet fitting because the entire RV industry uses a bayonet fitting for some strange reason and not an proven industrial fitting like this. So this is where the back to bayonet fitting comes in. And then last but not least, they do make extension hoses. Now this is, if anything, this is really the only drawback I see in the entire system. So here's your extension hose, just like any other extension hose. Does the same thing. But what do you see? You see two male fittings. Or so what do you do to couple it together with your hose? Well, that's the part I don't like. There's your coupler. Since you're using an industrial system, this is an industrial coupler. It's the only way I can describe it. It's big, it's bulky. However, you know when you put your fittings in this and seal them, they're not gonna come apart, they're not gonna split, they're not gonna leak. There we go. Yep. You sure this will hold? Hey man, why would they sell you a hose spreader if you couldn't spread the hose? Huh? So, um, as, as bogusly big as it looks, uh, same thing, everything's universal. Um, that's the way it is. And you camp, your fitting goes in there, you clamp it back down. Sorry, got the thing in the way, and it won't come off. Okay, put the other hose on, you continue it on, and, th and there's your extension. The downside, like I said, is you have this big thing that you now need to carry around with you somewhere. That's the only downside. Other than that, I don't use the extension tube very often. I got this only because I know sooner or later I'm going to get somewhere. I'm going to be glad I have it, but I do have to lug it around. In any case, that's the new system from the, the Wastemaster point of view, and I'm very excited about putting this in, as I know this is going to be my favorite thing, as much as you can talk about gray and black tanks goes. Um, all I know is I've already patched this, this tube twice with, with emergency tape, and the other brown tube I've actually replaced, replaced, because you can't fix them, uh, two of them in, um, in, in, a, in, in within three months, and that costs a lot of money. This system is more costly. Don't get me wrong, it is. However, it may be the last system you ever have to buy. So, anyways, I'm gonna get to installing this thing. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. I'll probably fast forward through the install, but still you can see it. But what it means is this. Don't, don't, let it, don't, let, don't, don't get too nervous about it. Okay, what you need to install it, hacksaw blade or a Dremel tool, anything you can cut plastic with because you're gonna cut these tips off, these bayonet fittings. And in this particular case, I'm, I, gotta, I happen to have a hacksaw, a hacksaw blade will work too. And you're just gonna go through and you're going to remove those little, little connectors. Then you're gonna take your little piece of sandpaper and you're gonna just sand that smooth, just so you have a nice smooth surface, okay? And then you need to make sure you have some ABS cement, okay? This is, all, this is an all purpose. And this one handles uh, PVC and ABS. And you gotta make sure you get ABS. PVC tubing will not work. It's not the same as this. This is not PVC. This is, this is a different plastic. So make sure you get one that's ABS. I'm telling you all this because one of the things I didn't think about when I got this system is I had to run to the hardware store. So I had to run to the hardware store to get some of this and a little piece of sandpaper because I really don't use this stuff on an RV normally. So. Just do yourself a favor, get the stuff ahead of time so when all arrives, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. I'm gonna cut off these four tabs. I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna glue it all together and I'm gonna have a whole new system at that point. And by the way, if you ever wanna go back, you don't like this for whatever reason, you screw up, this is replaceable. This whole thing is just replaceable for like nine bucks. So this whole thing comes out and goes in, you just release these and you can put a whole new one of these in and that's, you go back to normal that way. In any case, I'm about to get to work, so we'll see how this goes. Be back in a bit. That's 
one of the problems with bayonet fittings. <clears throat> Anyways, this is the guck I was telling about. See that? It's all fat and stuff. Now remember, this is the gray side of the tube, so everything was running here. That's 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 terrible. And for whatever reason, over time, this is now sealed on here, and ugh, I can't get the bayonet off. I won't have that problem with the cam fitting. Yeah. Well, screw it. I'm putting a new system on anyways. Anyways, that's the gook. Boy, this is the smell. Um, let's do this. Seal that. Okay. Simple as that. Look at that, comes right off. Again, right off. Huh. Thought I would have to fast forward, forward through all this because it was going to be boring, but maybe, hey, maybe it'll work. We'll see. And then I got one more. Don't forget the one in the back. So you're going to have to feel for that one. Line it up and there it is. Like I said, line it up and there it is. Nope. Hey, Michael Rowe with 30 jobs would be proud of me right now, right? This one's a little bit more difficult. It's in the back. I think I cut it at an angle, and that's why I can't get a good bite on it now. There we go. Came right off now. So the harder one, okay, so the harder one is the one in the back. But I guess that's where the sandpaper comes in. So I'm just making sure I got a nice, clean cut as I can back there. I just feel a little bit of a knob. I just want to make sure that's gone. The other ones popped right off. It's because I can see those. Okay, so sandpaper. Boy, the toughest thing about that was a ding bang that's been not coming off that tube. Oh, speaking of the tube, I told you I'd sealed it. There's there's my seal with my, my tape. I told you I sealed that before. There's my hole. In any case, that's all nice and smooth back there now. So, we're going to do a dry fit. Here's the cam lock. This is what you're now going to use to put your fastening on. Um, this is the, the plug, the plug, the, the cap, if you will. So, as you can see, this goes right on just like anything else would have. And I'm just going to see if I got nice clearances. Seems to be okay. And I don't have anything weird. I know I'm going to want to line it up pretty straight because I'm a little, well, weird like that. I've got to be straight. So I'm going to find my, my point I need it to be. I got nothing in my way here, as you can see. So that's good. And I'm going to make a little mark. So I'm just going to take a, screw, a flathead screwdriver, make a little line so I know where I'm calling my center point. There we go. Just a little, little line. And I know I'm going to line my center point up with that line right there. And I know I'm good. Okay? Make sense? Good. So, everything else looks good here. Okay. So, just so this thing doesn't flop around too much, I'm just going to put it in the can. Okay, just to get it out of the way there. I guess I could remove it off the chain if I wanted to, but I really don't want to. And this is what I'm going to worry about right there. So, now get yourself a piece of paper towel because you know you're going to make a mess, right? I know I usually do. 
And, uh oh, I forgot to pre open this. Figures, right? Again, what am I weak today? Okay, pause. Okay, unpause. Got my can and look, I can open it. Okay, actually, Brenda opened it. Thanks, Brent. Okay, so just like anything else you're going to put together with PVC, you do your glue. Um, yeah, some people they clean it first and stuff. I don't have any cleaner, I, I went cheap, sorry, and don't yell at me, but it's going to work. So, get my little glue out here. I can glue it. And then we're going to go for that seal. So there's my line. I know where I want to be. I'm going to push this up. In. I can hear it. And I'm going to just line that up right where I want it. Make sure I'm good because you know this stuff sets up quickly. And I can see my glue all the way around it. So I know it's got a really good tight fit there. And I'm going to say voila. So um, I can see my glue coming out the top here. So I know that's... That's, you know, it, it, it oozed really well. And I um, wonder, you know, glue is a misnamer, misnomer about this stuff. It's not really glue. It kind of melts this stuff together. It says cement, but in any case, okay, so now we have a cam system. So no more bayonet. Bayonet's gone. We now have this. Came out, right? Take this. Just like you would before, you're coming up, you're going right inside, lock, lock, best fitting ever. Watertight, leak proof, good to go. Take this, shove it in the drain, open her up. Then when you're done, after you rinse out the gray, all you do is open up, drop it away, Put your plug back in. Done. Cam fitting. That's the future. That is the future of RVing. I don't know why they're using bayonet fittings unless maybe they just wanted something unique for the industry to, to make that, I don't know, nobody else is making. But if they were smart, they'd all be using this because this is a seal that is tight and leak proof. And it's been used all over the country and is used by tanker trucks and everything. It's a proven system. In any case, I'm Dave Bob from Outside Our Bubble. I have some shit to go drain. Okay, so now what I said about dumping, well, you know. Any case, now um, that I got all the hard work done and everything, we're just going to go ahead and B10 we just pulled in, and we're going to do a hookup. Got my gloves on, even though the cam system is actually a much cleaner system to work with than the old bayonet stuff um, because of the shutoffs and things like that. So, hey, let's do it. So... Got my little pad, like I said, because I got rocks here. Kneel down. As you can see, everything fits nicely into my bay. Actually, uh, case in point, I have more room now in here with this than my old two backup hoses and the other system for some reason. I think it's because this one compresses better than the other one. In any case, pull this out, just like you would anything else. Open up your bottom thing, which is already open on my end. Undo your side cam locks. Of course, this is nothing more than your cover. Slide this into place. Easy as that. Lock. Lock. That's on there. Okay, tip. When we do this, always make sure you have water in your gray tank for your first test. Gosh, you don't ever want to open up your black tank because you have stuff in there and find out you had a leak that you didn't think about because you did something wrong. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. You saw me do it. However, I'm still going to open up with the water in the gray tank first just to be sure. So, in any case, let's go hook up the rest of it. So I got my tube here. As you can see, it's it's staying nicely together. Grab my nice, nice nifty handle. I'm going to come out here. Whoa, look at that. That actually shows a really good suction seal. I can't pull this. I have this valve shut. And I can't pull this. Magic. <laughs> I didn't expect that, actually. Actually, I expected a really good tight seal, but wow. So in any case, we're going to take this, open up the drain. Remember the donut? 
So that's just going to require me to go like this. Push it down in. Just for the kicks of it, I want to make sure I have a solid seal all the way through. I'm going to shut this valve off. So this is now in the closed position. And the reason I did that is I want to open it up and let the water come all the way to this position from the gray tank and see if I have any leaks. Okay, Brenda, you're getting this, right? Just in case, because this will be a really good YouTube video if something goes drastically wrong. Okay, so gray water. Remember, gray water. Going out, and it should stop at the end there. There it is. And sure enough, this is now full. Okay, so this tube is 100% full um, of water because that valve down there is holding it shut. Now remember, the, the idea of that was in case that ever plugged, which I've had happen, I could just shut that off right there and I don't have to drain all this stuff out of the tube. So I'm looking at this to make sure everything looks good. I see no leaks, which I expected. Of course, the cam is secure. There's nothing going on here. So then, now remember, I'm only doing this part because I wanted to make sure I had a complete good system on the first attempt. Now I can open this up. There goes the flow. I'm gonna shut this real quick. I'm gonna stop it there. The reason is because I wanna do my black tank. Because <laughs> I've had, actually, we've had to do that for a little while and um, I've been wanting to do this project. So now we can do the black tank. So I'm going to come over here. I still got plenty of water in my gray tank to flush it out. And I'm going to open up my black tank. And here we go. Coming down. It's got this nice little clear tube down here. So you can actually see what's going on. You, you know things are flowing. You know everything's going right. Uh, you don't really have to show that, honey. That's kind of disgusting. Up here, up here. That's better. Yeah, there we go. Anyways, just my case in point. Stuff's going through that right now. And because it's a clear tube, I can see it. So as soon as this is done flowing, then what are we going to do? Say it with me. Shut the black, open the gray. Great. And that will flush out this tube nice and clean. So I'm just watching this to see how it comes out. Da -na -na -na. By the way, just so you guys, I didn't mention it, which I think I did. This is a back to bayonet fitting which is something that they have, which you can go back to the bayonet just by sliding this into the cam fitting. And then it gives you the, the, uh, the bayonet fittings for the old type system in case you ever had to do that. So in any case, looking at this, you can see my, I'm pretty much drained out at this point. Um, can you see that? There you go. You can see I'm pretty much drained out. So now we're going to go open the gray tank. So I'm coming over here. I'm shutting the black. And I'm opening the gray, which will flush it all out. So watch that tube down there. Here we go. You'll see the bad stuff come out, as you can see the color. And then look, followed by the clear, which is all the gray tank. So this is getting a nice clean flush coming out of here at this point. And hey, what can I say? That's uh, RV black and gray tank with a new system, Wastemaster. Figured I'd do it all at one time, not only talk about the gray and the black tank, but also show a new a system that uh, I think I'm really going to like. It's very clean install, very looks great. I don't have to worry about things like stepping on it. And uh, we'll go from there. So, hope this was useful to you. My name is David Bott. We're from OutsideOurBubble.com. We'll see you on the road. And remember, life is always smoother when you're traveling in the left-hand lane. Take care.